Hello everyone, this is Chad Kaleher, Beck's Field Agronomist in East Central Illinois. Today's June 26, 2019. Just wanted to share some observations uh, with you regarding some questions and calls I've been getting this week. Today I'm in southeastern Vermilion County, Illinois, east of the town of Georgetown, Illinois, and, and west of the town of Cayuga, Indiana. Uh, purple pigmentation is cor in corn is uh, a combination of responses uh, from from a couple different things and possibly a third cause. But one of the one of the things that we can see purplish pigmentation in corn be caused from is a, a storage of sugars in the above ground plant material after a period of cool nights. And and this corn was planted June fifth, so later planted corn. And currently we have V four corn stage. But we did go through a period of cool weather after this corn was emerged. And those plants tend to shut down a little bit and do tend to store up sugars or what's called anthocyanins, causing this pigmentation like we're seeing here. The other thing that can cause this is genetics. So we know that certain genetics tend to purple uh, a little bit more than others. And that tends to come into play here in this field as well. So your, your seed agronomist or your, uh, your Bex um, dealer or uh, other representatives, such as seed advisor, would have some information regarding the type of hybrids that would do this in the field. The third and final thing is uh, what I'm going to look at now. You know, one of the things I like to do whenever I come out to a field like this is obviously I like to dig. And digging roots uh, in something like this is going to give us an indication of what the third possibility would be here. And as we look at a couple plants that did have some uh, purple pigmentation, obviously, here we've got a V4 plant and couple of them and there, there's two plants that you know I just want to point out a couple things here with my knife you know, here's the seed that was placed and this is our seminal root system down here this is not the major root system that's that's taking over but basically we got our seed and the seminal roots this is our mesocotyl which you want white and healthy which it is it's dried out a little bit since the time I dug you know and right here is the nodal root system this is gonna be a primary root system we're gonna take over and uh, this is what's really important to accessing nutrients and, and early nutrition. And one of the things that we think about whenever we think about purple corn is, uh, you know, is the plant accessing phosphorus adequately? And one of the ways you can kind of answer that question is, is take a look at some of the root systems that you dig up and see if there's any kind of a pattern to their development. And as I rotate this root system around, you know, the perfect scenario or perfect perfect ideal condition would be that we would have good um, vertical and lateral root growth a combination of both and here we're tend to see right there we tend to see a flattening out of that root system or what many people would call tomahawk roots and so that's something that is is making this plant lack the amount of phosphorus that it needs early in the season is causing a little bit more of this purpling. So again, we have several things going on here. We have we have the factor of the cool period after these plants were emerged. We have the hybrid effect as well as the root growth because of uh, the tillage in this field was done uh, twice this spring prior to planting. Uh, and we did have wet conditions, um, less than ideal. Uh, whenever the tillage methods were, were done. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. That's what's leading to this pigmentation, this purple pigmentation, this uh, temporary uh, pigmentation that's going to uh, turn into green growth and regular green growth. And there are places in this field, just want to point out this place in this field that the plants appear normally. Um, that's where the soils were a little bit drier and the roots have been able to access the phosphorus just fine. You know, one of the things you can consider and this is not going to be considered by everybody, but one of the things you can consider to help stimulate cell division and root growth, this is an example of a field here that has not had any herbicide applied at all uh, this, this spring or this summer yet. And you can look at the addition of a foliar plant growth regulator in your tank mix with herbicides. So I'm not talking about herbicides as far as growth regulators. I'm talking about things like endolacetic acid, gibberellic acid, butyric acid, things like that. So there's products on the market. Talk to your suppliers. That's something that can help benefit that root stimulation and root growth. Although we do have very good root development so far, it is tending to be in more of a tomahawk pattern. So something to consider. It's not going to cure all the problems of compaction. Obviously, we need continued rainfall for that to help itself.